dehydroepiandrosterone, DHEA, and pregnenolone supplementation worth it or not? There's no contest. It's mandatory. Vigor, Steve, here. Are supplemental neurosteroids worth it or not? But Steve, aren't DHEA and pregnenolone only meant for grannies suffering from cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease? What possible role do these neurosteroids have in bodybuilding? Well, let me inform you in this video, I've been running DHEA and pregnenolone supplements for the last five years or so, and I feel that they're highly beneficial, a game changer almost. And based on all the research that I've done and all of the positive anecdotal reports that I've read and seen with my clients using DHEA and pregnenolone supplementation along their cycle, I would pretty much say that it's mandatory. Before we get into all of that, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Let me explain to you why it's important to supplement these neurosteroids in whenever you're running performance enhancing drugs that shut down your HPTA, your hypothalamic pituitary testes axes. Whenever you go on cycle, most cycles would consist of a testosterone base and perhaps some dihydrotestosterone derivatives or progestogenic 19 nors on top. Please don't do an oral only cycle or a SARMs only cycle. Every cycle should contain at least a little bit of testosterone and in all of these scenarios, your HPTA is shut down. Now, testosterone is beneficial because it's a bioidentical compound. Your body works on testosterone. Even if you're a woman, you synthesize a decent amount, albeit a smaller amount than men, of testosterone, which you require, especially later on after menopause. This testosterone is essential. Testosterone will convert into estradiol or dihydrotestosterone, and the estradiol can later on convert into estriol or esterone if you're using an over-the-counter supplement called methane, which helps with estrogen balance. But all of the precursor hormones, being pregnenolone, DHEA, which stands for dihydroepiandrosterone, androstenediol, androstenediol, progesterone, allopregnenolone, and pregnenolone, all of these precursor hormones, which are required for normal physiological function, but the production of these neurosteroids is not completely downregulated. When you shut down your HPTA with exogenous steroids or steroid-like compounds in the form of SARMs, anything that potentiates its effects through the androgen receptor, and the hydroepiandrosterone are still being produced in the adrenal glands as well as in the brain. So even though the gonads, the testicles are no longer producing pregnenolone and DHEA, in serum, you still have decent amounts of pregnenolone and DHEA floating around, whether that's free pregnenolone and DHEA or sulfated pregnenolone and DHEA, which aren't biologically active, just like testosterone anethate isn't biologically active. The anethate ester first has to be metabolized by the carboxyl esterases, which are predominantly found in the liver before testosterone can potentiate its effects through the androgen receptor and do all of its magic for the beneficial things that we want out of testosterone and pregnenolone sulfate and DHEA sulfate first need to be metabolized by the steroid sulfatase enzymes before they can potentiate their effects. And whether that's in the brain or skeletal muscle or some of the organs which are responsive to pregnenolone and DHEA, and when these neurosteroids are sulfonated, they offer little to zero beneficial effects. Now, when you take pregnenolone or DHEA in supplemental form, they're not sulfonated, but the steroid sulfatase enzymes will metabolize pregnenolone and DHEA into pregnenolone sulfate and DHEA sulfate quite readily. Now, this process goes back and forth depending on your serum, pregnenolone, and DHEA concentrations. Most labs will only offer DHEA sulfate to track your serum concentrations. So it's very difficult in most countries, in most labs, most clinics, most hospitals, Right, let's cover all bases here. It's very difficult to get an accurate representation of these neurosteroid concentrations in the bloodstream and whether that's representative of how the neurosteroid concentrations are going to be in your brain, in your adrenal glands, in your skeletal muscle, everywhere else. That's also very difficult to pinpoint because, again, the adrenal glands and the brain synthesize pregnenolone and DHEA readily even with when you don't have a fully functioning HPTA. So most labs will only offer a DHA sulfate analysis. And perhaps if you're lucky, a 17 alpha hydroxy pregnenolone analysis or a progesterone analysis. So you're going to have to work with what you have access to. If you can only test DHA sulfate, 
and your levels are bottom or middle of the reference range, it might be wise to supplement DHEA in. And if your 17-alpha hydroxypregnenolone levels are bottom middle of the reference range or your progesterone levels are bottom middle of the reference range, it might be advised to supplement pregnenolone in. Again, if your lab or your clinic or your hospital offers a direct screening for serum pregnenolone or serum DHEA concentrations, you can ideally go with this. But again, it's very, very rare. So you have to pinpoint a little bit based on these limited markers, which are available, how much supplementation you need. And unfortunately, I rarely see blood work screening for pregnenolone with an A or allopregnenolone with an A or androstenedione or androstenediol. These are generally not found on blood work screening panels. A Dutch saliva test might give you an indication on some of these neurosteroids and how much your saliva contains, right? This is a little bit more extensive regarding the corticoid steroids and the neurosteroid concentrations and all of the metabolites in your saliva. So that might be an initial screening that you can do if you really suffer from terrible adrenal fatigue or side effects which are related to low levels of neurosteroids. So there is some screening that you can do, but generally speaking, the most effective marker to determine whether your pregnenolone or DHA supplementation is needed and effective when you incorporate that is DHA sulfate. We can solely determine from DHA sulfate concentrations whether you need supplementation or if you need to increase your supplementation. Now, if you're young and your adrenal glands are pumping out neurosteroids left and right, and you're going on cycle way earlier than you're supposed to, let's say at the age of 21, your DHA and pregnenolone concentrations are probably going to be more than sufficient, the middle top of the reference range, even with exogenous testosterone or other anabolic androgenic steroids or selective androgen receptor modulators. When you're young, generally speaking, it's not really going to be an issue unless you're really trying to make a career, you're working your ass off 24-7, grinding your gears, doing all kinds of projects, not sleeping enough, relying on caffeine or other stimulants. In those particular cases, your neurosteroid concentrations might be low because you're close to a burnout and suffering from adrenal fatigue. But if you're young and healthy and not overworking yourself, and you're probably starting your steroid cycle too early, in those cases, DHA sulfate levels are going to be middle top of the reference range. So supplementation is probably not going to be required. Again, unless you're grinding your gear and you're already close to a burnout, then it's going to be highly beneficial because DHA supplementation actually helps to reduce symptoms of adrenal fatigue by increasing the sensitivity to adrenal hormones. And especially if you combine DHA supplementation with a nootropic called CMAX, which I already made a separate video about, I'll link it at the end of this one. CMAX increases the sensitivity to DHA, which increases the sensitivity to adrenal hormones. This is a surefire way to get you out of that situation where you're suffering from adrenal fatigue and your feelings are freaking tired all the time, regardless of how many stimulants you take. DHA supplementation in combination with the nasal spray C-Max, both for a couple of weeks in duration, will really improve this condition. So you won't feel tired. You don't suffer from adrenal fatigue anymore. You actually feel a lot more energetic. The only downside of this protocol is that you're probably going to increase your sensitivity to caffeine. So instead of having four shots in your morning coffee, now you can only tolerate two. That's what happened to me. And even though I discontinued the DHEA and Cimax a very, very long time ago, I already resolved some of the adrenal fatigue that I was suffering from at the end of my diet. I still have a lowered tolerance to caffeine. Now this protocol is going to work whether you're young or old, but when you're older, you probably need to increase your DHEA and pregnenolone supplementation because your natural neurosteroid production slowly declines. And whether you're on exogenous testosterone, steroids, or SARMs or not, neurosteroid levels are going to get less and less and less as you age. That's why when you look into all of the literature of pregnenolone or DHEA supplementation, you see pretty high dosages, 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams per day for either or or in combination. In which cases in the elderly, yes, 100 milligrams pregnenolone per day or 100 to 200 milligrams of DHEA per day, highly beneficial to prevent cognitive decline, highly beneficial to reduce the onset of Alzheimer's disease, act as an anti-inflammatory in cases of severe arthritis, helps with the memory formation, reduces anxiety, improves moods, 
potentially the libido. There's a lot of benefits of pregnenolone and DHEA, which I can probably do an incredibly long deep dive video about. Let me know down below in the comment section if you want to see a deep dive about pregnenolone and DHEA by itself and go through some of the scientific evidence and ways we can incorporate these two neurosteroids for our bodybuilding and fitness goals, right? This video would be way too long if I really do a deep dive on pregnenolone and DHEA. So let me know down below in the comment section if you want to see a separate video about that topic, because supposedly there's a lot of additional benefits of supplementing with pregnenolone and DHEA at higher dosages ranging from 100 milligrams per day and upwards. Again, all of these studies have been performed in the elderly where it was shown that pregnenolone and DHEA supplementation can improve memory formation and cognition to a certain extent. Now, if you don't identify as an elderly, neither do I. If you're a little bit younger, let's say 25 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, and you still produce a decent amount of DHEA and pregnenolone, even if you've downregulated your HPTA, again, you can prove all of this with blood work before you consider supplementing. I don't think the dosages upwards of 50 milligrams DHEA and 25 milligrams pregnenolone per day are required. If you're using HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, which also stimulates DHEA and DHS sulfate production in the adrenal glands and pregnenolone production to a certain extent, because the adrenal glands also contain luteinizing hormone and chorionic gonadotropin, LACG, receptors. That means that the adrenal glands are responsive to LH and exogenous ACG and will produce a decent amount of DHEA, DHEA sulfate, pregnenolone, pregnenolone sulfate to help sustain the neurosteroid concentrations. And this effect is already observed at low dosages of 250 IUs ACG three times per week. Now again, as you get older and your neurosteroid production potential declines, you might need more ACG, and at which point, I believe it's around 500 IOs ACG, you don't see serum testosterone levels go up anymore, but serum estradiol levels keep increasing. So there might be a cutoff at about 500 IOs ACG three times per week or every day, perhaps. That's probably your maximum tolerable dose of ACG to sustain testicular function and produce a decent amount of neurosteroid production in the adrenal glands. If you notice that your DHS sulfate and perhaps if you can test the other markers, your pregnenolone levels are still middle of the reference range, in which case you can decide to supplement with pregnenolone and DHEA besides your ACG regimen. You keep your ACG dosing protocol the same and you add 10 to 12.5 milligrams pregnenolone per day as well as 25 milligrams DHEA per day. You can split the dose morning and evening with meals, without meals. It's entirely up to your preference. I prefer all of the neurosteroids or oral anabolic androgenic steroids on an empty stomach to improve its absorption. Some people prefer to take pregnenolone and DHEA as a lozenge, so they put that under the tongue and increase the bioavailability that way so it don't, doesn't get metabolized in the liver. There's a hundred different kinds of delivery methods Probably the best is, again, putting it sublingually and absorbing it that way. Dosed twice per day, so that's, let's say, 5 milligrams to 6.25 milligrams pregnenolone twice per day, and 12.5 milligrams DHEA twice per day sublingually. Don't change anything to your steroid or ACG protocol. Merely add these neural steroids on top. Give that a month. Recheck your DHEA sulfate, and if you can, your 17-alpha-hydroxy pregnenolone levels or progesterone levels to see if they've changed and come from the bottom middle of the reference range to somewhere around the middle or middle top of the reference range. Ideally, you keep these levels at the top of the reference range if you really want to be on top of your cognition and all of the other benefits which come with sufficient neurosteroid concentrations. If you still see that they're not sufficient, you can double the dose to 25 milligrams pregnenolone per day spaced over two administrations, 12.5 milligrams in the morning sublingually and again, 12.5 milligrams sublingually in the evening and 25 milligrams DHEA sublingually in the morning and again in the evening. I prefer a two to one ratio of DHEA to pregnenolone because again, pregnenolone converts to progesterone, which in turn converts into mineral or corticoids like aldosterone, for example, or glucocorticoids like cortisol, for example, which in many cases, aldosterone is already going to be altered when you're taking performance enhancing drugs whether that's a growth hormone or anabolic androgenic steroids, 
your aldosterone levels are going to change unless you're mitigating some of that with an angiotensin receptor blocker in the form of a telmersartan, for example, and cortisol levels are going to be elevated post-workout, especially if you train too long. So your aldosterone and cortisol levels, you can actually keep somewhat under control by not training too long and taking telmersartan, for example, but you can also simply keep your pregnenolone intake sufficient, not too much, that you raise your progesterone levels and concurrently raise your cortisol or aldosterone levels. 10 to 25 milligrams supplemental pregnenolone, I feel is sufficient for most people to get towards the top of their pregnenolone reference ranges, and whether that's pregnenolone itself, pregnenolone sulfate, or 17-alpha-hydroxy pregnenolone, whatever test you have at your disposal, 10 to 25 milligrams supplemental pregnenolone, a game changer, if you're not producing sufficient amounts of this neurosteroid by yourself because you've downregulated your HPTA and your adrenal glands and your brain and your testicles, assuming you're running ACG, are not keeping up with the pregnenolone demand. Thus, you need to supplement on top. That supplementation can be less if you're using ACG, but most likely it's going to be more up until 25 milligrams per day as you get older. DHA supplementation can be a little bit higher. I feel upwards of 50 milligrams per day is sufficient to bring your DHA sulfate levels or DHA levels to the top of the reference range. Again, it can be in a two to one ratio to pregnenolone because DHA, the hydroepiandrosterone, converts into androstenedione or androstenediol, which ultimately result in higher testosterone levels, which then converts into estradiol or dihydrotestosterone. Depending on the administration route, if you take DHEA orally and it passes through the liver, anecdotally, it seems that it raises estradiol levels a little bit more compared to taking DHEA sublingually, which seems to increase testosterone levels a little bit more, again, because it's not passing through the liver, which alters the metabolism of DHEA into its downstream hormones. There's not so much scientific evidence to back this up. Again, most of the studies have been performed in the elderly at higher dosages, which are already androgen deficient. Again, their HPTA is slowly downregulating as they get older. So again, to summarize, 10 to 25 milligrams pregnenolone sublingually, 25 to 50 milligrams DHEA sublingually, keep the ACG in there to sustain testicular function and get somewhat of a pregnenolone and DHEA production in the adrenal glands and in the testicles. This way, this method should keep all of your neurosteroids and all of the intermediary hormones somewhat towards the middle to the top of the reference range. And now you can get all of the benefits which are associated with sufficient neurosteroid levels. Again, I can do a deep dive on all of the benefits and all of the scientific evidence if you guys want me to. It's going to be a longer video than this one, which is already way too long than I expected. So... I'm going to leave it here. The hydroepiandrosterone, DHEA, and pregnenolone supplementation, worth it or not? There's no contest. It's mandatory for anybody using performance enhancing drugs that downregulate their HPTA. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the description section. Let me know in the comment section what your experiences are with supplemental DHEA and pregnenolone and how much of a game changer it was for you or if you only noticed that your serum estradiol levels went up and you only ended up using more aromatized inhibitors, you didn't get any of the cognitive benefits that you would expect from these neurosteroid supplements, let us know down below in the comment section. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. I have no idea how much DHEA and pregnenolone are in these cannons. I'll do blood work at the end of this month and then see if I need to supplement some DHEA and pregnenolone besides my testosterone and perhaps Remobolin and ACG regimen. Again, just using a test booster for now. Hopefully, that will keep my neurosteroid concentrations somewhat favorable. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.